AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Here are today's top headlines. Mini hits a milestone. BAIC says what it wants to do with Opel and Toyota stops supporting the Japanese Grand Prix. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Tuesday, July 7, 2009, and now the news. More details have emerged in Beijing Auto's bid for Opel. According to the Financial Times, if BAIC wins out, it plans to spend $2 billion to build a factory in China and begin building vehicles there in 2012. The company would also close Opel's Antwerp plant in Belgium and cut Opel's workforce across Europe. BAIC offered 660 million euros, or nearly $1 billion, for Opel. The Lear Corporation, one of the largest U.S.-based suppliers, best known for supplying seats to the auto industry, filed for Chapter 11. But the bankruptcy filing only applies to its operations in the U.S. and Canada. The Wall Street Journal reports that it has to restructure some $3.6 billion in debt. Two years ago, investor Carl Icahn offered to pay over $37 a share for Lear. But shareholders rejected the offer, saying the company was worth twice that. Today, those shares are going for 29 cents. GM faces tough times ahead. That's what all the media seems to be saying. The Detroit News says new GM has hard road to revival. The Wall Street Journal says GM and U.S. backers face rough road ahead. The Free Press headline says what GM Chrysler need to speed ahead. Kind of curious that similar stories with similar headlines all hit on the same day. Here's a sign of the economic trouble that Toyota is in. The AFP reports the company will not host next year's Japanese Formula One Grand Prix. The race was to be held at Toyota's Fuji International Speedway. Local media reports say it cost between 3 billion yen or about $30 million to host the race. It's not a huge sum, but Toyota's strategy during the downturn is to cut all non-essential expenses. Even though it only came out in 2001, the new Mini has hit a major milestone. They've now built 1.5 million Minis at the company's assembly plant in Oxford, England. The milestone model itself, number 1.5 million, is a red Clubman. When production of the new model is combined with those of the original Mini, the number grows to 6.8 million. More is always better, right? Well, first Mercedes came out with a seven-speed transmission, then Lexus trumped them with an eight. BMW must have felt left out because Wards reports that the company is rolling out a new eight-speed automatic. BMW says the ZF gearbox will cut fuel consumption by 6% on V12-powered cars, but transmission designers tell me you can get all the gear ratio spread you need with six gears. Anything over that is just for bragging. Coming up next, we'll take a look at the aerodynamic design of the 2010 Prius. We'll be back right after this. Changing tires out here could be dangerous, but with these tires, I don't need to worry. Bridgestone. The Toyota Prius is in a class all of its own. Even though there are 20 hybrid models on the market right now, the Prius accounts for half of all hybrid sales. I've been test driving one this week, and here are some of my observations. When you first see the new Toyota Prius, you'll notice that it looks a whole lot like the Honda Insight, especially from the side view. The two cars are almost identical in profile, but there's some key important differences. For example, there's much less of a plan view, that is, much less of a boat nose to the Prius compared to the Insight. It's got a much more blunt front end. Also, when I pointed out the aerodynamics of the Insight, I noted that they had a seal on the leading edge of the hood to prevent air from going under the hood, make sure that it goes over the top of it. Toyota does the same thing, but it puts the seal, a rubber gasket, down on the fascia. They don't mount it up on the leading edge of the hood does the same thing, just interesting how they both chose to do it differently. Another thing that you'll notice down here on the front fascia is this 
this styling line. I say styling, it might have some aerodynamic benefit in that as the air breaks around the side, it keeps that attached flow as it goes down the side of the vehicle. And just like the inside, the Prius is a very slab-sided vehicle. Again, to maintain attached flow. At the very back, in the front fascia, you'll see the same line that's carried up on the front. This is definitely for aerodynamics to provide a good breakaway point, separation point, so as the air comes off the end of the car, it doesn't, doesn't spin around. There's not as much turbulence. Also, Toyota is using this line on all its purpose-built hybrids. You're going to see this as a styling cue so that you get the idea this is a hybrid. And just like the Insight, very high uh, rear end to the car, keeping that up, of course, for aerodynamic reasons. It has a built-in spoiler to it, but because they keep this so high, the backlight is very shallow, really hard to see out of, and so like the Insight too, they put in clear glass on the back of the vehicle so that you can see out. But I'm telling you, inside, it's kind of weird looking out the back. Your visibility isn't all that good. Not bad, but not that good. Underneath the car, you'll notice that it's very flat. They do not have a full belly pan under there, but there are different shields along the way, both in the front and the rear of the car. Again, all with trying to get the air to flow as smoothly and as turbulent free as possible as it goes under the car. One last point to make on this from an aerodynamic standpoint. It's very subtle, but you'll see that the roof bows up and out above the passenger heads. It sinks down in the middle a bit. Why? Again, that's to present the least amount of frontal area to this car to give it the best possible aerodynamics. And one last thing, we got about 56 miles to the gallon with this Prius, which is 4.2 liters per 100 kilometers. That's with a good combination of city and highway driving and without any hypermiling techniques. And that is downright impressive. And that's also it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. But don't forget to tune in to AutoLine After Hours, Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern or 2300 hours GMT. And we do have an announcement to make that night. Not about who's coming on, but about who's not. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Visit our website for even more great content all week long. Auto Line Extra, John's Journal, Podcasts, and even more. So click over and get the inside view at AutolineDetroit.tv.